we're on a lookout on part of a walkway up uh, Kakepuku with Shane and uh, over there just nearby is a maunga called Takawa and apparently as the story goes there were a few other maunga around these parts Shane. Yep so in now Ngāti and Ngāti Kahu stories uh, in the time before human beings were here uh, mountains were known to move and they moved at night to Old Tepo. They moved at night and when they moved at night uh, they were careful in their movements because the sun would transfix them in their spot forever. And so moving was a delicate matter. And what we know about mountains in the country is that female mountains and male mountains, there weren't an equal number of them. The male mountains outnumbered greatly female numbers. And that being the case, uh, female mountains uh, as wives or as partners were hard to come by. Uh, the stories here, as related by Maitubuna, were that majority of the mountains began their lives or their appearance in the middle of the North Island. And when you think about it, it sort of makes sense, you know, mm. the geothermal plateau, uh, that volcanic area where the two plates meet yeah. and from there they migrated out uh, one of the mountains that migrated away from there in pursuit of a female mountain uh, was a mountain that we know as Manaya in Northland, uh, in, Northland in Whangare he left uh, the middle of the North Island and went north looking for a wife he had abandoned his family, unfortunately, but one of his sons decided to follow and to catch up with his father. That mountain became known as Kakepuku. So the young Kakepuku uh, left the central North Island plateau, volcanic plateau, and came this way, pursuing his father. However, along the way, he met three male mountains, all courting the beautiful Tekawa, as we can see her there. And how do we know she's a female mountain? Look at her curves and her beauty. It's easy to see. And certainly the three other male suitors saw that beauty too. And so she was with all three when the young Kakepuku came this way. He abandoned his search and pursuit of his father and decided instead, I am I quite like the look of her. <laughs> and that became a war of the mountains, the battle of the mountains ensued. And in that battle there was the great throwing of lava and rocks and shaking of the earth, the spitting of fire. Uh, but to no end the three mountains, male mountains, uh, were bested, were beaten mm. by uh, Kakepuku. And look at him, he's mm. magnificent, he's huge. That left Te Kawa and Kakepuku uh, as husband and wife, if you like. And, and you they joined the, themselves. And you were saying that there's times of the year when they show their affection to one another. Oh yes, there's a certain time of the year where both of them show their affections to each other. And not like human beings, of course, but like super bee. Mm. So as a certain time of the year in which Te Kawa will exhale the mist from her and her, her mist will rise up and gather around uh, Kakepuku, around his shoulders and around his body. And likewise Kakepuku will exhale and the mist and the, the fog from off his, his head and shoulders will descend and then curl around and embrace her. And through all this embracing, it marks also a certain time of the year when we know that that's when we have the tunaheke, that the eels are beginning to run and migrate. And as we look out from this vista here, all the way to Tekawa and further afield, you'll see all this great flat pan land here. That all used to be waterways, mm. wetlands. This was the great Tekawa wetland which stretched out for miles in all directions. Now gone. 
drained after 1865 uh, in order to improve the land and turn it to yeah, the farmlands that we see before us. Well, it's a, it's a great story. It's got, you know, it's got um, action, violence, romance. It's got a romance, yeah. Um, <laughs> and it's a story, it's a legend of the place before people were here. So what, what's, what purpose does a story like that serve, Shane? Well, it serves a number of things. Uh, probably one of the first questions that we need to answer is, how do we know these stories if it was from a time before human beings? Christian? Mm. Well, we're Tangata Whenua, people of the land, literally people made of land. From our long occasion and relationships with the land uh, and our tohunga, those people who were gifted, uh, could read and understand the land in ways that we might only imagine. Mm. Uh, our people, not only here, but in all parts of the country, uh, they often speak of their mountains as maunga kōrero, speaking mountains. So the notion is that mountains have voices, if only we knew how to hear and understand the language. So these stories of the battle of the mountains, mm. those stories are stories for the minds of children. As a child progressively matures, it's ready for more in-depth conversations. So the notions of a mountain only being able to move at night time, and we might envision that a mountain moving from the middle of the North Island to here in the, under the cover of darkness. The darkness that we're speaking of is underground. Mm. And then to eventually uh, migrate from underneath into the world of light. And once that happens, that mountain has transfixed on the spot. So what we're talking about is um, geothermal activity, volcanology, the movements of mountains, the movements of magna. It's no small coincidence that uh, the central North Island volcanic plateau mm. is described by many of the tribes as the place where these volcanic mountains began their lives and moved out. The throwing or the battle itself, the casting of great stones and the flinging of ash and mud and lava, all of these things are about eruptions. Mm. And those battles between mountains, uh, in a child's mind, uh, is a battle. With the maturity of the mind comes the maturation also of, of those stories that we've internalised. They captured our imagination. Now that the imagination has been captured, we can go forward mm. with a greater and more in-depth lesson and exploration mm. move into science. And, and, and a connection. Mm. Well, thanks very much for sharing that with us, Shay. You're welcome. Kia ora tata.